Middle Ground is a social experiment that brings humans with opposing beliefs together. These discussions may contain viewpoints that are the result of misinformation. Remember to seek out experts and to be critical of your own biases while forming an opinion. Please see the humanity in each participant. And as always, we encourage empathy. There's plenty of people out there that can separate sex and love, but for me, uh, when I have sex with someone, I fall in love with them. And while I do have friends with benefits, these people are chosen very specifically because I know that I will have to go through heartbreak on my own when I have sex with them. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. I can separate love and sex. For me, I think that I can separate it, but oftentimes it doesn't turn out that way. This is kind of the cliche, but I do think that sex for me is better when I'm in love and when I have respect and communication with the person. I also think it depends on how we define love because I could maybe, you know, love that person as a human, but maybe not in a romantic sense. So I think there's a lot of nuance around it. I'm not really someone who's going to say like one or the other. I also agree with that as well. When you have those intense feelings for a person, the sex definitely like hits different. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that you feel safe enough with this person to be emotionally vulnerable as well as physically vulnerable with them, it's a very special bond that you share what yeah. you feel like. I really resonate with that because I'm actually a survivor of sexual assault and I'm also disabled so I think that trust plays a really huge role and that perhaps could even you know be more important than the love factor. I think for me I can make the clear distinction because I've had a lot of meaningless sex in my lifetime to make me feel good to occupy uh, the sense of loneliness and then I've loved someone but the sex part just hasn't worked out but the love is there. And sadly, relationships like that didn't work out for me. And I do agree with what you guys said. When I'm in love and I can trust someone, it's better, especially as a trans individual. There's a lot of people out there trying to fetishize that don't understand your body or respect you. So having the love part makes it a lot better. I, I love deeply. The people that are around me feel that. Love and sex to me are completely different things. They, they absolutely can exist separately. I hate the fact that even that, you know, even the polyamory community is fetishized as well, you know, and it's like it, it completely sexualized. It's only about the sex. Uh, similarly to you, I have a sexual trauma. I have things in my life that affected me deeply that I'm still dealing with till this day. And the fact that it's automatically just clumped in is just something that I, I have to kind of oppose. Well, I don't believe this is true for everyone. Obviously, there's plenty of people out there that can separate sex and love, but for me, when I have sex with someone, I fall in love with them. And while I do have friends with benefits, these people are chosen very specifically because I know that I will have to go through heartbreak on my own when I have sex with them. I've been with the same person. My husband and I were high school sweethearts. He's the only person I've ever been with. And mm -hmm. so it would be hard for me to separate sex and love simply because I've never had to. I think it's also important to note that some people are maybe asexual. And so if I have um, an asexual partner, which I have not had before, I would have that discussion and it wouldn't have to be integral to be part of our connection and such. My name is Jessica and I'm polyamorous. To me, relationship anarchy really has to do with destructuring our ideas of hierarchical relationships in that romantic and sexual relationships don't have to be at the top. I think it's actually a lot healthier to have a community with our friends, our family, romantic partners, etc. My current relationship status meets my needs. You know, one way I know I'm in the right relationship with my wife, we still enjoy texting each other, I love you. You know, you always start out in a relationship, oh, I love you, I love you. And then, you know, are you still doing that 10 years later? We've had both my fiance and I are fair shared struggles with mental health in very different ways, but that understanding and that support, even if I do say something really fucked up, even if I do react maybe erratically or violently during a panic attack, he keeps coming back, he keeps trying. Our love is stronger after every single um, disagreement and every single hurdle. 
So for myself, I practice a type of polyamory called solo polyamory, or sometimes a style called relationship anarchy. And these two styles are inherently less about hierarchy and more about autonomy for myself. With my current relationships or what I'm able to achieve, it gives me enough flexibility for me to feel really good about the things that I choose to take part in. And even if I'm in a relationship that's not so great or a relationship that isn't fulfilling to me, I can still be looking for other relationships or maybe I have another existing relationship that is more fulfilling um, or that actually like does support me in a way that my other relationships don't. My name is Randall and I'm polyamorous. For me, the process of coming out as polyamorous was really me deciding that getting out of monogamous relationships because I had feelings for somebody else was just not working for me. I noticed that other people were practicing other styles of relationships where they were being truthful to their partners and admitting the fact that they had feelings for other people and doing it ethically. Currently, I am dissatisfied with my relationship status because I did just come out of a really bad breakup, so I am single at this point, and I can be self-sufficient enough to enjoy my own company, but it's just in certain moments in life, like for example, uh, I was uh, taking a long road trip and I just like imagined my ex, like, you know, I, me caressing her leg, like while um, we're on the road trip and you kind of wish that you just like had a person just to share those moments with. So I practice uh, parallel polyamory, which means that my husband and I see other people and we don't necessarily need to meet or get along with the other people that we're seeing. And I love my husband. I've been with him for 18 years coming up. And I have some friends with benefits, but I am looking for someone else to be like in a relationship with that fulfills some needs that I'm not getting from my current partner. What I've been looking for, I'm starting to de probably determine that I'm not going to find one person who is going to fill the rest of these boxes and I may have to separate that up into multiple other people, whether it's um, relationship-wise or otherwise. I'm Bunny and I am polyamorous. The way that I deal with jealousy is I like to break it down and ask myself why. Why am I feeling jealous of my husband? Is it because he's spending time with someone else and I need more time with him um, or my other partners? Or is it something else? And once I break it down, I can then address those issues such as requesting more time with that partner if I am feeling jealous that I am not getting enough time with them or I can take it upon myself to fill said time with someone else or with another activity to be able to not focus on the jealousy that I'm feeling. Patriarchy is the root of monogamy. In the little bit of like research, I guess, that I've been doing and realizing that it was absolutely contractual. It was absolutely for um, gain, advantageous reasons. It was never love. Way back when it was all, it was, like you said, it was contractual. Like women in general were an object to be purchased. While that has changed, that is still rooted in the system of monogamy and people thinking they need to be with someone forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's how people stay in abusive relationships. I feel like there is a lot of pieces of monogamy that are rooted in that patriarchal sort of feel. However, there are a lot of people who feel like monogamy is just the best option for them and are connected to their person regardless of that. If we're thinking about queer relationships as well and in people who are married to a partner of the same gender or outside of the, the norm, I don't feel like they are feeling that, that patriarchy. I don't know if I would say that it's like the reason that everyone is monogamous. It does play a role in just the way that we just construct our realities. But we see monogamy across so many species and that has me wondering. Obviously, in human society, it was a big component, but there's something so much larger than that in monogamy that reaffirms my belief that it's not really about the patriarchy. It's about this inherent need within us and some of us lean towards monogamy and some of us lean towards polyamory and that's just the way it is. Obviously, I'm a little bit older than everybody here. I grew up and really didn't know much different. The churches were pretty much, this is right, this is wrong. You know, when somebody said, pulling me, I was like, oh, they must live in Utah. 
That's about the only place you knew that where that could possibly exist. And there was no discussion of why somebody has that relationship. You didn't talk about any of that. We should make a distinction that it's not also polygamy. We are polyamorous. Okay. So polyamorous and polygamy are two yeah. just different things. And see, a lot of it is... Right, just information and Yeah, not I knowing. grew up not knowing. Right. It's unrealistic to commit to being with someone forever. So I feel like we spend a lot of our lives dating and trying to figure out who we'd like to be with. And we don't always get it right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like thinking about it that way, it's unrealistic to think about the fact that the one person that you end up choosing will be your forever person. It could change in the future. The divorce rate is very high in this country. So I think that's a, an easy way to think about it. Mm -hmm. I also think it fits into that fairy tale concept that you know this is the one. And living on a planet that has harbors like seven billion people, I feel like that's highly like unrealistic that you're just gonna be in love with just this one person your entire life. My name is Mel and I am monogamous. I've just had this self-discovery that there's so many things about myself that I just need to work on and it's rooted in me just not wanting to go out of my comfort zone and polyamory is definitely something that is out of my comfort zone. If I was to try it, maybe I would actually like it. I think it really depends on the person. I mean, I feel like I can only speak for myself. You know, a lot of people do stay together for, say, you know, kids or something like that, or perhaps finances. It's, you know, a privilege to be able to maybe get divorced or live on one income. So I wouldn't say that it's a, you know, catch-all black and white issue. I definitely feel that you can be with someone forever, but you're going to change as individuals as you grow. And it all depends on how those changes and with, uh, work with each other. So if you are able to change and accept the changes of your partner, then you can be together forever. But a lot of people change, not necessarily in a bad way, but in an incompatible way. Yeah. I would also like to add, um, I did believe that I would have a forever person, but recent experiences um, of a breakup that just happened, that's what changed my perspective. And I looked at it more logically. I should be more open to the fact that I will meet other people down the line and I shouldn't assume that this person is going to be with me my entire life. I mean, I'm polyamorous, but I've been married to my first boyfriend since we were like teenagers. I think that's my forever person. And I believe that for me and, I, and with the waves and with the changes, you know, yeah, you make that recommitment over and over again. And I think that there can be that forever person for anyone, but I also understand experience plays a role in that tremendously, and that I haven't had that experience of, of loss. My opinions of this have shifted after being in a really toxic, bad relationship where I really wanted it to be my forever, mm -hmm. but deep down I always knew it probably wasn't gonna be feasible. And then after that relationship, I didn't wanna be in a relationship at all. And this amazing person came into my life, mm -hmm. and I knew, and I tried to push him away, but it became evident that that was just my person. My name is Luca and I'm monogamous. After being in a polyamorous relationship, I really knew monogamy was the route I wanted to take. There was some jealousy going on in the relationship as to how I loved each person and that I couldn't divide it 50-50. And I didn't want to, I want to be able to give 100% of myself to one person. Oh, it's kind of making a sick beat right now. Hey good humans, we can all agree sex and love are complicated, but the truth is you can explore your sexual pleasure regardless of your relationship status, including on your own. That's why we're taking a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Lilo. Lilo is on a mission to speak up about sexual pleasure, break taboos, and remove stigmas through education. They are globally recognized and established as the luxury pleasure brand with years and years of leading the way for personal and partner pleasure. Lilo has a wide variety of toys, including the Sila Cruise. But Lilo is not just a sex toy brand. It's a self-care movement aimed at those who know that satisfaction transcends gender, sexual orientation, race, and age. Because after all, pleasure has no gender. It's all about taking pleasure into your own hands so that you can educate yourself about your body and pleasure first to enjoy sharing it with a partner. So check out the link in the description to learn more about sexual wellness and become part of the self-care movement 
that's all about coming together. Now let's get back into the video. The home environment that I grew up in set a good example for my future relationships. I think for myself, I grew up seeing a lot of broken homes and people who had divorced parents. And I felt super fortunate that that wasn't my home life. And, I, and I'm sure it shaped me in ways that I'm, I'm not even able to comprehend. They were a, um, a really good example of the way that I want to treat another human. My mother, um, I just remember her like doing it all. She was just like the pillar of strength. And um, I think just saying that, I always thought like, okay, I can do it no matter what. And if I have a husband that can compliment that, then that's awesome. My name is Emerald and I'm monogamous. Uh, my husband and I have been together for 17 years and I think that um, within our monogamy, if there's an issue that I have with him, then we're addressing it head on and we're able to fix that within our relationship as opposed to introducing other people. And so I think that over the years, our foundation has been strengthened simply because we're able to communicate to one another. I grew up, my parents were married, they've been married from my birth to now. Eventually my mom stayed home uh, and my dad kept working, but he still was trying to be active in my brother and mine's life. But as I developed mental health issues and became um, a difficult child, uh, he did not cope well with that and he kind of like peaced out for a bit. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that set a very great example because in my greatest time of need, I would have appreciated if he stuck by my mom and stuck by me. So even if it is difficult for me to interact with my child, that's not what I want for my future. My experience growing up was definitely similar to yours. My father was away a lot. So it was just me, my older sister, and my mom. And the way that my parents communicate, it's like their relationship they can do pretty much over the phone. Mm. It's that lack of communication and also having uh, an emotionally unavailable mother, it definitely shaped a lot of codependency issues on my end. Uh, my uh, father was an alcoholic up and through my teenage years and when he recovered, my mother became a really bad alcoholic. I guess a good precedent for monogamy, you stay together with the same person till death. They were together until she died, but it was not good for either of them. I don't think that they loved each other at that at the point in time that I saw them. All it kind of like says to me in that is like don't stay with someone because you're supposed to, because you you signed a piece of paper or because you have children together. You need to take care of yourself first because you can't be a good parent to your child. You can't be a good partner if you aren't taking care of yourself. I grew up in a pretty religious household. There were certain ways that you needed to behave, certain ways that you needed to act and be, and I played that role really, really well. And, you know, and I was applauded for it. And I was given opportunities because of it. And to kind of step out of that um, was really hard. And, and mainly because my family was just surrounded by a lot of secrecy. We don't talk about things. We shift them under the rug and we just bury our emotions as much as we can so that we don't really have to deal with it. And that is not at all how I'm choosing to lead my life. My name is Katie and I'm polyamorous. I struggled with my faith and also being a polyamorous person because this is absolutely completely frowned upon in our community. I was a worship pastor for many, many years in a very conservative church. When I started to just be a little bit more truthful with who I was, I had to really re-wrap my mind around what I truly conceived God to be and what that love towards me looks like. I realized there was just no way that I could keep hiding this really important part of myself. A polyamorous relationship is appropriate for raising a family. So I have a six-year-old, and uh, me and my two partners, we raise him, and Baltimore City you know, Schools knows about it. My son has an IEP, so that means he has some learning disabilities, and there's three people to support, to be there for him. So I don't know, I think for me, just it's allowed me the freedom to you know, kind of go after goals, go after dreams, and have the support system still at home, and my, I know my son is lacking nothing. I mean, it, it's, it's tricky because, you know, you have other little kids are like, oh, why does Lucas have two moms and a dad, uh -huh. you know? And it's just kind of easy to just be like, you know, families just look different sometimes. Just being more open about it, even that in itself is, is gonna give kind of just more space for these family structures to be just respected. Because I know that in my community, I think we're the only ones really kind of openly being this way about who we are. 
um, and we haven't seen any sort of backlash or anything like that. So, you know, like logically, practically, it does make sense to have that support. And we're also talking about kids when we say family. I think it expands much further than that. And so you see people who already have multiple parents with stepdads, stepmoms. And so I see no reason that this is not um, an addition to that, you know. So I just want to put that forth too. You know, the one thing I heard is the three of you, whatever you got to do, you're going to do so he can be successful and loved and cared for and feel safe and be safe. My name is Mike and I am monogamous. What I love about my wife so much and makes our marriage special is A, she puts up with me. And we have found ways that we support each other with what we like to do professionally and spiritually and help out. And I think that's a lot of what I took away today. I saw that with the other side. So as for like my household, I, we have five children. Our parents live two and a half hours away. So it's mainly us doing the brunt of the school pickups, drop off, all that kind of stuff. Um, while I do see that it would be very beneficial to have someone else, I think that's why nannies are available, babysitters, that kind of thing. Trying to add someone else to our lifestyle would make me so anxious. It would just be like, oh my gosh, there's another person in the house that needs something, that has to do something, and then somebody else have to deal with, and then they possibly want sex tonight. I would be like, I'm over it, so I mean, that's, 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 that's how I feel. That's how I feel. That's why Google calendars exist. Like, I get what you're saying, and that there is like a lot of that in the polyamorous community where you're interested in someone and they're like, hey, look, I really like you, but I just don't have the bandwidth right now to add another partner. But at the same note, if you or your husband got another partner, they could watch the kids while the two of you go out on a date night. Like, that would... <laughs> add time for you and your, your husband to be able to go off well, like, because they could, you know, be integrated into the family. All right, we can cut.